Hey guys, this is Joe. Today I want to introduce you to our partner Vanta. Achieving ISO 27001 or SOC 2 compliance can unlock major growth for your company and build customer trust, but the process can be time intense and costly. Vanta automates compliance, getting your audit ready quickly and saving up to 85% of associated costs. And Vanta scales with your business, helping you enter new markets. Join 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora that trust Vanta. Claim 20% off Vanta at vanta.com forward slash startup radio that's vanta.com spelled v-a-n-t-a dot com forward slash startup radio welcome to startuprad.io your podcast and youtube blog covering the german startup scene with news interviews and live events Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany, as well as the world's first 24-7 internet radio station dedicated to startups and tech companies. Wherever you're watching this or listening to this, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. This time, I finally have a very nice uh, guest here. We tried to get an interview scheduled for some time, but nonetheless, I'm very happy to have her here. Hello, Rukaya. How are you doing? Hello. I'm good, thank you. And how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. We are here to talk about your interesting life, what do you do for a living and how to make a robot advisor for women. But let us first get started with you. As always, your uh, LinkedIn profile will be linked down here in the show notes. So um, I've, I've been looking a little bit through and what I found very interesting is basically you traveled the world, you studied in the world. I see like Tongji University in China, Georgetown University, Mannheim Business School. You've been a credit analyst at Goldman. You have been at uh, Bloomberg, at uh, Thomson Reuters. So basically you have been a very much capital markets and finance focused person um how did this happen what how how did you start up in capital markets in trading in asset management mm -hmm. so it's all went back to when i was growing up actually so i i grew up in nigeria so i'm from nigeria even though i'm british citizen as well living in germany and um, I remember every time I, on Fridays, when I visited my grandmother in the township, she was a gold trader and she was a power within the community. And uh, she used to have lots of women around her and they would donate money and give the money to a handful of people. And she taught me the basics of um, empowering people or women, particularly uh, using money to build wealth and also the power of communities. And I started learning about money when I was very young. And this piqued my interest into going into investment banking. So when I moved to the UK to study and um, I started out at Goldman Sachs, I did my summer internship. Uh, there I was a derivatives analyst, a uh, summer intern. And after I did the internship, I was, uh, I was invited to come on to the graduate program. So I, I joined uh, again after my summer internship. And I spent nearly three years at Goldman Sachs. Um, yeah, that, that was how we started. It was basically from, from my upbringing and watching my grandmother as an entrepreneur handling money and also my mother as well. And that was why I was really, really interested in going into investment banking. Um, did you start investment banking like with the perspective like doing big deals or have you ever been fascinated more with the trading side with the very fast pace of capital markets what was more your interest 
it was more of the vast, the, the fast pace of capital markets, uh, basically. So uh, I was looking at um, derivatives. So de- what, what's it called? Derivatives is an asset that derives its value from another asset. And it was uh, mainly on that the effects, so foreign exchange aspects of derivatives that I was involved with when I was in Goldman Sachs. And it was very much fast paced moving billions of dollars every day. And it was it was just fascinating and amazing. And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed every much part of it. And I continued within that line and also learning more about investing as well, looking at big deals in, in, in that respect. And once I moved to Bloomberg, I moved to Bloomberg as uh, an advanced specialist within, uh, again, derivatives, uh, covering FX, uh, fixed income and commodities as well. Very interesting, fast paced. Moving to uh, Reuters as well, it was uh, amazing because again, it was just dealing with a lot of money, daily movements of money within the capital market. And finally, I moved to BMC, uh, BMC Bank in London. So it was more of a, I'd always, I'd always worked with big companies and this this was not big compared to the Goldman's, the, the Bloomberg and the Reuters. It was um, a French Moroccan bank. So it's, it's I think, about the second biggest bank in, in Morocco, but they had a presence in London. So I went there to to uh, as, as a vice president, looking at the ca- capital market and the treasury. So I was managing, managing the treasury of, of, of the company and also dealing with the capital markets of uh, trading in, in FX, in equities and, uh, and fixed income. So it's working in the financial market has always been so interesting and just very um, amazing on what you can do with money and the value you can get for money and also the value that money gives in that respect and how you can use that to invest. So yeah, it's always been very much fast paced and also looking at the investment aspects of it, looking at big deals in that aspect. So it's more of mirroring the two aspects of things. Yeah. And we may add for everybody who's not um, who's not in capital markets FX refers to foreign exchange. So basically that's most of the time uh, either speculation or actual transactions. For example, somebody sells goods to uh, the US, gets paid in US dollars and has to convert it into euro. All this conversion that is going on in the capital markets. And when you look at the capital market prices, they're like tiny, tiny differences in the exchange rates between, let's say, US dollar and euro each day. But if you have large enough amounts, that's, that makes a big difference each day. So basically, you, you've been dealing with FX as well um, as derivatives like options, like uh like futures, swaps, and stuff like this. And for everybody who would like to learn more, you can go down here in the show notes. There'll be a lot of links to explain all this stuff. We will not get into that. Otherwise, we'll be here talking still tomorrow, right? (laughs) Let me get this straight. You you came to London, you studied, you you had some uh, very good jobs in related to trading especially foreign exchange like currencies so when what did happen to you that you want to be an entrepreneur that you want to to see something different to to move to germany what triggered you there so what I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, I guess because of the bloodline of having entrepreneurs and watching my grandmother and my mother being successful entrepreneurs. What, what was a turning point for me was the fact that when you look at the investment industry, it's, um, it's, it's very much dominated by men. You don't really see lots of women. And even back then when I was working in, in, in the financial industry um, as an employee, um, employee it was a lot of men. And I, I remember a particular example. I went into my bank and wanted to talk to my financial advisor regarding getting a mortgage to, to, to buy my first apartment. And what he said was like, oh, so where is, where is your husband? I was like, oh, why, why do I need a husband before I could get a mortgage? And um, it was more of um, he, he was looking at it in a way like there has to be a man with you in order to get a mortgage. <laughs> 
And I was thinking what you can see kind of like my savings, my salary and whatnot. Why do I need this? But it, it, it just popped in my mind that I, I do not want to actually engage with someone like that, that has that kind of thinking. And it, it's, it was very disheartening. And I spoke to other women and they kind of mentioned they had a similar experience as well in the sense that they were not taken seriously when they, when they sought financial advice or when they, have, when they had specific needs, uh, not just only buying a, a house, maybe it's something totally different. And I started looking into more into this. So I started coaching some colleagues, my friends, and developing portfolios for them, investing and whatnot on the side. Uh, it was just more, more of like a hobby. And when I moved to Germany, I actually moved to Germany because we decided to raise our daughter here in Germany. My husband lives in Germany. Um, I was living in Germany already. So I moved here. And it became even more obvious that the gap is, is, is huge compared to the UK. And uh, when we look at not only the, the, there's also the pension gap as well. There's also the, the wage gap, right? It's about 21% in Germany. And before I came, I was thinking, Germany is so is going to be so different because they have a female chancellor and whatnot. And little did I know it wasn't going to be like that. So um, I decided, okay, perhaps it's actually now for me to look into this passion of mine to start empowering more women to invest according to their goals and needs and people that would actually listen to them. And that was why I started on this journey and I purposely looked for business schools. So Mana Business School and ISEC Business Schools and looked at both of them, their rankings and how they help entrepreneurs because I was coming in new from another country, from the UK, right, into Germany. I needed to know what to do in order to be successful as a foreigner and as a non-German as well. And it's, it was very supportive. They were very supportive, the two business schools. And uh, it was part of the strategic project, uh, Pace Up Invest, which is the name of the, of, the, of the startup, was part of the strategic project. We worked on it for like a year to develop the business idea and the concept. And now it's a proper business now. So I guess it's more of feeling frustrated and listening to all the problems that needed to be solved when it comes to money and investing and also having a proper independent advice given to women in order to ensure that they're being listened to and also making sure they're investing according to their specific goals and needs and they feel they can trust the person that they are talking to in in that regard. Like that that could be like life-changing or life dominating decisions um women and men make their like buying a car what can i afford what is too expensive how can i finance it like as you said a mortgage an apartment but also like retirement savings it's also as you said there is a wage gap women tend to stay uh longer at home and work less so they have to save more and have to save better than men in order to get a comfortable retirement and That is something um, I think a lot of women don't think about yet. They should by now. They should now. <laughs> But until now, they didn't do that. And that is something uh, you're out to change. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. It's something that uh, ought to change. And because like, like you mentioned, um, women are not doing enough when it comes to that. And it's it all boils down to We have different financial knowledge, we have different financial behavior, and we have different financial needs. Different life cycles, basically, we live longer and we earn less. So we have to start looking at all these aspects. And most of the time, we are the ones that end up caring for the older ones. And when we have kids as well, we take time off work on average, seven years. That's seven years of not putting any money into the pension pot. So it's all about planning and getting women to start planning earlier and not thinking that investing uh, is only for men. It's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not that way. It should be for everyone. And also we need to be more open when we come to, when, when it's time to, for us to start talking about money because the way we have the relationship with money is very important on how we then spend it 
or how we cons or how we consume it or how we save in, in, in that sense. So all these aspects as well, and as well as the money scripts that we've been taught when we were younger on whether money is the root of all evil or uh, money, money, or, or you have to have money in order to be something. So it, it's all this aspect of money script as well that we need to start thinking about. And when I talk about financial knowledge, we've seen time and time again that even when when you say the financial knowledge, there is a huge gap between men and women, and uh, it's it's globally. There's a very low financial literacy globally in in that aspect. And when they break it down between men and women, when you look at different countries. It's still, it's still, it's still staggering. In Germany, for example, it's about eleven percent, and obviously, the more, the less developed the country is, the wider it becomes. And regarding uh, financial knowledge, we need to know what we are doing when it comes when we want to start investing. Basically, this, the the basics. So the basics, such as simple interest compounding, how we're going to use compounding into our favor to make sure we're investing on the longer term because when we invest on the longer term it actually compounds into a higher return and um, when, when we start to know more about this then we can apply it on our day-to-day uh, uh, activities when it comes to our expenses when it comes to our budgeting making sure that we pay down the interest that has a high interest first and then gradually work down on, on the other aspects of uh, maybe loans or debts that we have that have uh, lower interest rates on it. And in, in addition to that as well, I also mentioned financial behavior. It's very different. Men are very much spontaneous when it comes to investing. So they talk to their friends, they, they're higher risk takers. On the other hand, women are more, not necessarily risk averse, but risk aware and when I say risk aware, it's meaning they're aware of the risk when it comes to investing. But then once they get that education and that confidence and someone that actually knows and listens to their needs, they are better investors than men. And research has shown this severally. So they tend to hold their investments on a longer period. And that means it grows, uh, um, it grows higher compared to men that tend to spontaneously trade in and out uh, out of their investment. So again, one of those things that we have to look at is our different financial behaviors. And then when it comes to the different financial needs, again, it's more of we go on we, we go on maternity leave, we go on sabbatical, or we have kids, we have to stay at home, we have older older parents we have to look look after. So all this involves planning early. The earlier we start planning for this life event, then we we kind of have Something, some, some form of contingencies in place when this time arrives and then we're able to plan properly and say, okay, we've planned this way and this is how this is going to look like in, when, it, when that time comes for us to take a maternity leave or whatnot. So, so basically, what, you, what are you saying is um, you're, you're there to help women start as early as possible to save and prepare for life events. And how does your startup pays up come into play? My understanding is it's a robot advisor for women, but how do you do a robot advisor for women? Don't tell me it's just all pink. <laughs> no, it's not all pink. So I, at the end of the day, it's it, the plan is for it to be a robot advisor. So we are in different phases at the moment just to make sure it's it goes accordingly. So how we're doing it is we we. It's a holistic uh, solution that provides uh, the tools for the women to, to learn about financial topics that is applicable to them. So to give them the basic knowledge first, and then we move them into if, if they need coaching or advisory. And this incorporates investment strategies as well, because we've seen time and time again that a lot of people have fear of investing. And advisory and coaching helps them to overcome this before they actually act into putting their money into any type of investment platform or robo advisor in that sense. So the plan is we're not going to make this, it's, it's not going to be pink. <laughs> but what we're incorporating in it is the fact that we're incorporating a, a hybrid model into it. So both digital and human, because we've seen time and time again that human aspect of investing is very important. So it's not just only digital 
that you, you leave it to the person to to sort it out, but then give them the, the nudge, give them the knowledge that they need in order to make the proper informed decisions for them to then move from thinking about investing to then going on to invest in, in that aspect. And then, like I mentioned, we, we look at what differentiates men from women. So we look at, so obviously the financial knowledge aspects of it, we're tackling it with having different courses and different e-learning models on there as well. When it comes to financial behavior, we'll be incorporating a behavioral finance aspect of it so that it captures essentially when we're looking at the risk assessment of the individual, we also look at how the individual will behave once they start investing because it's very, very important to capture this because how we behave will determine how we, what type of behavioral biases we have. We determine how long we're most likely to hold on to our portfolio. So this is one of the aspects we're, we're bringing it onto the place of investable advisor. And also the fact that there will be uh, a lot of impact investing as well. So the women will be able to choose how they want to invest according to their values and how they want to invest according to their needs. And it's going to be very personalized to them. So it is not bunching people together into one type of portfolio because we all have different needs. We have different um, uh, circumstances. We all have different time horizon. So this is going to look into all this aspect to make sure we give the women the right tools to help them to achieve a certain goal that they're trying to achieve in the future. So this is all going to be into in, be uh, embedded into the Rupa Advisor once the Rupa Advisor is ready. But right now, the first phase that we are in is the learning phase and the coaching phase to get them ready because we've, we, we see that this part is really, really important because this is what is missing in a, in a lot of wealth management platform. The, the learning and uh, the coaching phases is missing. That's why most of the time they don't tend to move this woman from, from thinking into acting. So if I give an example now in Germany, 90% of the users of Uber advisors in Germany are men. Right. And this hasn't really changed because everything just looks the same and they're not targeting women properly. And perhaps, perhaps, I don't know. And when I talk to most women as to what robot advice are you using, they said, OK, I've gone on to this one. I really don't like it. The service is not good. I don't understand the jargon. There's so many things out there. So what PaySoft is trying to do is to simplify it so that wealth management is brought out to the masses and not just for the rich, basically, in, in that aspect. So that's how we're differentiating ourselves when it comes to, to Ruba Advisor uh, for PaySoft Invest. And for those that don't know what Ruba Advisor means, it just means that there is no human interaction. So the, it's the, 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 the platform, the, the algorithm we we'll allocate your money into different asset classes, but we are looking at a hybrid model whereby if there is any issue, you have a in human interaction that will help you with your asset allocation and whatnot. So first question would be, are you mostly working with low-cost ETFs? So at the moment, what when, um, when a client comes regarding what they're looking for, so what, what's, what I do is I look at them on a holistic basis, right? So it depends on what, what their financial goals are and also what their risk profiling is. And then I take into consideration what their constraints are. So what is their time horizon, their liquidity needs, their legal and uh, regulatory requirements or constraints, as well as their unique circumstances. So it depends on all this that, you can now say, okay, this is what you need to invest into, either low-cost ETFs or mutual funds or potentially some stocks. Again, it depends on the risk, risk profiling of the individual of who we're currently working with. So, But then when, when the robot advisor becomes available, we're going to have a mixture of low-cost ETF, of mutual funds, as well as the ability to trade in stocks as well. But the platform will make sure that only those that can trade in stocks actually trade in stocks because trading in, in, in individual stocks is very risky as opposed to trading in a basket of securities whereby the risk is reduced because you have a bunch of other stocks in there. 
so it minimizes the risk so what we what we do is we look at individual basics and then we advise accordingly on where they should uh, trade into where they should put their money into according to their portfolio mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and basically my understanding is you measure you first train the women then you measure their risk tolerance their risk taking capability in terms of like total assets life situation and stuff like that and then you help them with your robo advisor to invest with like a hybrid model combining um human interaction and the actual robot um how would this human interaction work Do you, will you have something like a call center where customers i i assume most of your customers will be women but there'll also be some men so your customers will then just call somebody up in a call center in the home office one of your advisors and they'll talk it through yes so depending on the on the package that um you have then you have uh, access to uh, advisors for those that uh need, need more hand like hand uh, handhold uh and hold, holding in that in that aspect. So if they need more information or want to know more about something, then they can already contact someone. So an advisor will be able to walk them through it, help them with their planning. If there are any specifics, for example, if if it involves estate planning, you can't really do estate planning on the robo advisor. So it has to have human interaction on there. If you're looking at um, intergenerational wealth transfer planning, you have to have a human there to help you with all the the, the complex intricacies in, in that aspect. So it depends on what the individual is looking for and how um, how much they currently have and what the complexities of their portfolio is like. So for example, someone that is just starting out that's, um, that, that has a bit of a knowledge and whatnot can go on the robot advisor and start trading and start buying. But as soon as they start accumulating more money, then they have to look at getting a proper... Uh, strategies in place and a proper portfolio in place whereby it cannot be really done on a robot advisor but you need a proper advisor that has all the knowledge to help you to put your money into the right asset classes but also using the right technology tools in in, in that in that in that regard so this is what we're, we're, we're mirroring together a, a pace up starting now obviously first with this um with, with the learning and uh, the, the, the coaching and then ultimately onto the robot advisor aspect of things. I see. Um, we're recording this now approximately mid of February. When will your robot advisor or uh, when will like the second part, the robot advisor and the, the, the let's call it in-person remote advisor, when will this go live? My understanding is uh, some parts are already live. You can see it on the website. Of course, go down here in the show notes and you'll find it. Um, when, when will uh, when will you have like the full service available? So the full service available, we're looking at by end of the year or early next year, because in order to have the full service available, we need to have the, the, the uh, Buffin 32 license. So, which is the big license. So we need to have that. So that is what we're we're starting to work on now. Uh, to get that in parallel, then we'll build the the the, the robot advice or wealth management aspect of it. So we're looking at end of the year, uh, beginning of next year, 2022. Uh-huh. Um we may add that BAFIN is the German uh Bundesamt für Finanzaufsicht. It's it's the oversight body for financial services here in Germany. Like um, eighty percent of our audience is not from Germany, so they say, uh, "Baffin, what is this? Can I eat this?" Uh? <laughs> and um, uh, just j- just final question before we, we wrap this interview up: um, How are you guys right now financed? Are you looking for external investors? Mm-hmm. So we're how we're financed now. So we're financed by. Um, the state, so the state I'm living is called uh, Baden Württemberg. So we finance via the pre seed funding that we got from there after going through an accelerator program. We got some funding in that aspect. And then there is a co investor with, with the state's government 
as an angel investor. So we have an angel investor as well, who is a very good friend of mine. Actually, we grew up together. We've known each other since when we were 10. So the next funding round, we're going to start um, the next funding round very shortly to, for, for the next phase of, of, of the platform. In total, we are, we're looking for 900,000 um, euros. So it's, it's quite just below the 1 million mark. And people say, why not just 1 million? Well, we've done our numbers and this is the amount that we need. So yes, the <laughs> so um, yeah, so we, we will start the next um, uh, funding round. But right now, how we're financed is from, from the state government uh, via a pre-seed program and also from a business angel. Well, only thing left for me to say is keep us up to date. We'll share any news, of course, um, on our social media channels. Of course, you'll find them down here in the show notes as well. And I'm sure you share all the social media channels of Pace Up with us so that we can also put them down here in the show notes and well as well. And everybody who would like to learn more can learn more. Only thing left for me to say is thank you very much and best of luck with your robot advisor. Thank you very much. Alexander. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.